This video is not going to show a rocket inside of a vacuum. There's already plenty of awesome videos out there showing you that. This video is also not going to show you combustibles going off in a vacuum because those exact same videos are showing that very thing. Flat earthers and hoaxers want you to believe that rockets do not work in a vacuum, so therefore satellites don't exist, the lunar landings never happened, and many even deny the existence of space itself. The sole means of propulsion for a rocket is based on combustion. The simplest definition is, combustion is a chemical reaction resulting in the rapid expansion of gases. It's in the physics behind engines, artillery, fireworks, and just about every episode of Mythbusters. The ability to create combustion in a vacuum or any other area robbed of oxygen gas is a chemistry question, which can be resolved by adding an oxidizer to the burning compound. Don't believe me? Stick a lit match in water. It goes out, right? But if you throw a lit M80 into water, the fuse stays lit because of the oxidizer in the compound and the fuse. Pretty simple. So eliminating those dismissals, the resulting argument is that flat earthers and hoaxers claim that a rocket needs to push off of the atmosphere to move. So if there's no atmosphere, no push, no push, no rocket. The flat earther and hoaxer argument is loosely based on Newton's third law, arguing that a rocket needs to push off of something to create motion. However, I can demonstrate the general principles of rocket propulsion with propellers. Sounds ironic, doesn't it? I built this little car. It has three free rolling axles and no motors to the wheels. On top of it, I have affixed two EDF motors and the necessary electronics and batteries to run them. I have also marked the thrust direction and the rotation direction on each motor. When I point the thrust to the rear of the car, we all know what happens. The props inside force the air in that direction and it propels the car forward. When you actually draw a rocket, one thing is always in that picture. That awesome fire plume out the bottom. All this is, is a controlled continuous explosion being fed by the solid or liquid fuels on board. And then an expansion of gases is channeled by the engine bell. I can simulate this by rotating the EDF motors outwards and pointing them away from each other. I'll lock them into place so they don't move. And now they are making absolutely no contribution to the forward motion of the car and are actually simulating a continuous expansion of gases. Now all I need to do is channel that expansion to a single direction and the car should move, right? Let's try it. First I will set up a pair of deflectors in line with the thrust of the EDFs. If the flat earther and hoaxer claim is true, the car should move forward so long as the motors are pushing against the deflectors. As you can see, there was no movement. Now let me take the deflectors and attach them to the car itself. and we'll spin up the motors. Due to Newton's third law and the conservation of momentum, the expansion of gases deflecting off of the deflectors causes force and moves the car forward. The gases themselves are not attached to the vehicle, so therefore you can't say that the car is pushing off of itself. Now multiply this by several million Newtons, and then again by five engines, and you get the Saturn V rocket. And given what you've learned, capable of producing thrust in and out of the atmosphere by way of the simple principles of combustion. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rockets work in a vacuum. Y'all have a nice day. Oh my god.